I've tested five of the latest and greatest all-rounder road racing machines as part of our massive Bike of the Year test. I'm focusing on the top three for this video, but let me level with you. Depending on who you are, I could easily argue the case for any one of my final three bikes being the best of the bunch. But considering that it's not just racers who yearn to ride the best performance road bikes, but keen enthusiasts too, there's more to consider here than simply trying to find the fastest bike in a wind tunnel or up a climb. I've done my best to sift through the hyperbole and headlines to arrive at a worthy winner of this year's Performance Bike of the Year category. But as always, we also want to know what bikes would be in your top three, so let me know in the comments. Now, we couldn't have made this video without the help of our Bike of the Year sponsors, so a massive thank you goes to them. Right, before I announce the winner, let me start by introducing the top three. In one corner is the Colnago V4 RS. As with all of our bikes, this is a machine that balances aero tube shapes with feathery weight, making it ideal for diverse road terrain. Our test bike came with a full Dura-Ace R92 setup, with Shimano C50 wheels and semi-wireless 12-speed shifting. It costs a punchy 12,630 euros and is one of the most prominent race bikes in the world today. Then we have the Cannondale Super 6 Evo. While Cannondale has now developed the latest Lab 71 spec frames for the pros, we have the High Mod 2 with an Ultegra Di2 group set. Our final bike is the NV Melee. This is the American brand's second go at making a road bike after the fully customizable Custom Road. While you won't see this in the Pro Peloton, as with our other two bikes, it does boast space for 35mm tyres and the freedom to build it up as you wish. More on that later. Let's start with speed. After all, that's what most of us want from a performance bike, right? The bottom line is that all proved incredibly quick, and although I'm sure a pure aero bike will have the edge on flat terrain, these all-round race-type bikes do a brilliant job of giving you almost all the performance without the common drawbacks. Now, despite our recent studio refit, we're not tucking a wind tunnel away back there, and even if we were, numbers arrived at in the wind tunnel would only tell half the story. On the road where it matters, I was struck by the sheer speed of the Cannondale Super 6, which, thanks in part to its excellent hologram wheel set, accelerated rapidly and held its speed with consummate ease. The V4 RS is similarly quick, to the point where I'll be damned if I can really tell much of a difference, which is remarkable given how traditional the tube shapes appear at a glance. Compared to the tour winning V3 RS frame set, it's said to be 13.2 watts more efficient at 50 km an hour or 31 miles an hour and 57 grams lighter. Look closer and there's plenty of neat camtail aero trickery going on, while it's worth remembering that the big fleshy thing plonked on top of the bike is ultimately the largest aerodynamic problem to optimize. The melee doesn't quite feel as fast to accelerate when you get out of the saddle and give it the beans, but the margins are really small here. The good news is, once up to speed, it glides forward with perhaps the greatest ease of all three. Personally, I found it the easiest bike on which to tap out a rhythm at 35 km an hour plus which is probably an indicator of what I'm going to talk about next. Comfort in a race bike? Sure, after all, while many riders race, that's not all these bikes need to be good for. Here, the NV Melee stands out. It's worth pointing out that the Melee is the only bike of the three that came with its wheels and tyres set up tubeless. This plays its part here, but the compliance to the exposed NV seat post of it is impressive, while the two-piece bar stem is comfortable to grasp however you prefer to. Overall, it deals with road buzz and bumps a little better than the Colnago or Cannondale, and this matters when you're out for a long ride and want to keep the pace high. In essence, the melee kept me fresher for longer, and I could focus more on the act of pedalling than bracing myself against the rigidity of the other bikes. The Super 6 is also quite comfortable, but is let down by the 25mm clincher-only tyres. All other things being equal, you may need to run higher pressures than ideal in such a setup, and it's the one area I'd immediately look to upgrade. The V4 RS is a race bike through and through, and rides like it's designed to excel on the smooth asphalt of continental Europe rather than the B roads of my UK test ground. It's not without nods to comfort, but ride it over some pimply tarmac in this spec at least, and its innate rigidity becomes apparent. All three race bikes offer racy handling characteristics, the fast, nimble responses you'll hope for when riding hard into a corner or trying to hold your own in a group. The V4 RS and Super 6 Evo are similarly matched, with geometries and ride positions proven on the very highest stage. Both are incredibly responsive when you put in an effort. 
the Colnago's head tube was designed to be a little less stiff compared to its tour-winning predecessor. This lends an air of confidence through the front end, while the rear is as taut as you might expect. The Super 6's equally race-ready geometry also produces impressively quick handling, with a real sense of directness provided by its relatively short reach. As with most race bikes though, each has a tendency to feel slightly darty when you're moving at speed. That's great if you're in a competitive bunch or simply prefer bikes that respond to the lightest touch, but the potential downside is they become a little more tiring to ride over longer distances. Of course, that won't be the case for everyone, but of the three, I found the Melee the easiest to live with over a longer ride. In fact, that's the Melee's trump card. Although the frame's geometry and handling is very much in the same racy ballpark as the Cole Nargo and Cannondale's, there's a softer edge here that makes it more predictable if you're pushing the limits of your riding skill. Plus, given that from the outset you can decide the dimensions of the finishing kit to suit your needs, you have a good degree of control over how the melee will behave in reality. It's worth noting that Colnago and Cannondale dealers might switch out components to suit you at the point of purchase, but this isn't always guaranteed and can depend on the vendor you're dealing with. As tested here, both the Cannondale and Colnago excel on steeper climbs, and were I to enter a hill climb race tomorrow, both would do a sterling job. One could argue that the V4RS could be benefiting from its lighter dual race group set, while the Super 6's excellent hologram wheel set really maximizes what that bike can do. In the event, both are competitively light at 7.23 and 7.57 kilograms respectively. Meanwhile, the slightly more mild-mannered Melee is no slouch uphill at 7.8 kilos, but I'd be more inclined to use it if I steered clear of steep climbs in favor of longer drags as weight becomes less of a factor. Descending confidence largely depends on the kind of handling you prefer. As I've mentioned, the V4RS and Super 6 are taut and lively and are incredibly entertaining to pilot down a descent. Confidence is perhaps the easiest to come by on the Melee though, especially if, like me, you don't have pro-level descending skills. The longish wheelbase acts as a steadier, making cornering downhill something to really get stuck into. Frankly, I make plenty of small mistakes when I'm descending, but on the melee, I always felt like I had a fraction more time to correct myself mid-corner versus the other two. All three bikes have frame sets befitting of top-level race machines. The V4RS is ridden by the force of nature that is Tade Pogaccia and his Team UAE buddies, while up until this year the high mod spec of the Super 6 has been under riders from Team EF Education First. The V4RS uses Colnago's top level carbon layup, though it's worth noting there are no lower tier versions available as you often get with big time brands. Colnago says it's reprofiled the head tube and carbon layup and it now accommodates a rounded steerer as opposed to a D-shaped one. Cannondale, by contrast, now pitches the high mod spec of carbon to everyone but pro racers. Those are now catered for by the brand's Lab 71 Skunk Works. Having said that, until now, high mod has been good enough for the pros and when the chips are down, it probably still is. The previous Super 6 Evo high mod won our overall Bike of the Year title in 2020, but Cannondale says it's improved the recipe further with a new Delta steerer that fits within a standard headset, a threaded bottom bracket, and a 12 watt aero improvement over the previous generation. It even says it's 4 watts faster at 45 km an hour than Specialized Tarmac SL7, but no doubt Specialized would have something to say about that too. Across the board, you get geometries worthy of bikes winning races at the highest level, and these are ideally suited to those who favour a typical racy ride position. The Cannondale is notable for its shorter reach, which helps keep the front end compact and effectively closer to the rider. The result is you never feel like you're overreaching to the bars, a criticism often levelled at bikes with racy pedigree. Elsewhere, key metrics like the head tube and seat tube angles, which largely dictate a bike's handling characteristics, are all within the same steep ballpark. That's ideal to deliver sharp handling and to pitch you forward over the bottom bracket. Now, the melee stands out because it isn't raced at the top level of road cycling. That said, Envy says it's every inch the road race frame set, but designed around its real-world fast philosophy. Where both the Super 6 and V4RS were developed in the wind tunnel at pro-level speeds of around 45 to 50 km an hour, Envy also tested and optimized the melee for the more realistic speed of 32 km an hour. So while the frame has all the hallmarks of a race bike, it's claimed to be very efficient at the speeds most buyers will probably be riding at most of the time. The Melee frame set features a substantially angled top tube and drop seat stays, which enables more of the seat post to be exposed and do its ride smoothing work. On the theme of comfort, all the frames have slim tubing in key areas to promote compliance and each feature good tyre clearances, 
32mm on the Colnago, 34 on the Super 6, and 35 on the Melee. Frankly, if you're intending to race any of these bikes, then you're well catered for. Let's run through the specifications of these three bikes, starting with the V4 RS. Perhaps in keeping with its singular goal of winning bike races, it's appropriate that ours is equipped with a Shimano Dura-Ace Di2 R9200 group set. That said, there's no power meter here, something you might feel is missing in a bike costing north of 12,000 euros. You can ask Colnago to fit Shimano's power meter crank set instead, but it will inevitably cost you extra. The rolling stock also comes from Shimano via its Dura A C50 wheel set, which is adorned with Pirelli P0 Race 28C tires. These aren't the latest tubeless versions though, which some might see as a relatively quick and easy upgrade. At the front, a Ceramic Speed SLT headset provides the platform for Colnago's CC01 carbon handlebar, which itself is said to be 16% more aero efficient than the V3 RS's setup. Naturally, cables and hoses route internally, while the bottom bracket spins on Ceramic Speed bearings. Both the Cannondale and NV came specified with Altegra Di2 R8100 group sets. This might sit second on the rung of Shimano's group sets, but in fact is currently our favourite from the Japanese brand, offering Dura Ace performance for less money and only a small weight penalty. The Super 6 gets a newly updated flagship hologram RSL50 wheel set, the same competition ready hoops you'll get even if you were to stretch the rarefied Lab 71 model. The rims feature a contemporary 21mm internal rim width, but notably curved to a chunky 32mm wide externally. These are wrapped in Continental GP5000 25C clincher tyres, which errs on the narrow side of a world fast switching to 28C rubber. I think it's also a shame that you don't get Continental's latest GP5000 STR tubeless tyre here too. Up front, a Vision Trimax carbon handlebar with integrated routing provides a spot to place your hands, and a titanium railed Prologo Dimension saddle offers the perch. All in, this spec will set you back £8,250. Not cheap by any stretch, but when you consider that both of the other bikes tested here are at least £2,000 more expensive, it might not seem so bad. The Envy Melee is the odd one out here again, as it's only available as a frame set kit. In order to enable riders to achieve the optimum fit aboard a melee, Envy allows the free size selection of SES AR handlebar and integrated aero stem. The stem comes in 80 to 130 mm lengths in 10 mm increments, while the bar can be had in widths from 38 to 46 cm. The Envy carbon seat post is also available in three lengths, and there's a choice of two setbacks, 0 and 20 mm. After that, you're at liberty to choose your own group set, wheel set, tyres, saddle, plus trimmings like handlebar tape and the K-Edge made integrated head unit mount. The upside here is that within reason you can specify the bike as you like. You can opt for a brand correct build with Envy's Foundation 45 wheels and 29C SES tyres as tested here, or for something else. £10,400 is undoubtedly expensive for my test build though, which, remember, compares to the Super 6 Evo at £8,250. So, which bike takes home the coveted crown of Performance Bike of the Year? In truth, each of these bikes have compelling merit, and I'm sure there will be as many of you who will agree with me as those who don't. That's fine, and I'd love to know what you think in the comments section below. But my winner is... The MV Melee. The Colnago V4 RS is a weapon. It's an incredibly quick and efficient feeling bike to ride, and I'm left with the sense that I'm probably not getting the absolute most out of it. I'll leave Pogaccia to extract the maximum from it, but I'm in no doubt that it's every inch the race bike he needs to win, and could well be many people's dream race bike. The Cannondale Super 6 Evo High Mod 2 is also devilishly quick and sharp handling, and is probably the equal of the V4 RS for sheer speed. Its Bike of the Year winning predecessor proves it has pedigree, and it's still every bit the consummate race bike it was. The fact that Cannondale didn't revolutionise it, but seems to have listened to feedback from riders and mechanics alike to make its tweaks usually adds up to a good thing. The Melee might not be the purest racer of the three, but in fact that's what makes it so commendable and a deserving winner. The overall experience is just a whisker, a whisker more composed than either the Cannondale or Colnago. It blends rip-roaring speed over a whole ride with manners arguably approaching those of an endurance bike. For those attuned to riding the sharpest knife-edge handling bikes, it might not be the perfect option for you. 
but I'm betting that many who want top level speed but don't want to be run ragged by it, the melee stands out from the crowd. That's why it's my performance bike of the year. But what do you think? Am I right? Or do you have another view? Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. And finally, if you like this video, then why not check out our playlist for even more Bike of the Year content.